going to discuss a very important topic which is exclusively mean for the become first semester courses which falls under the FY UGP NEP under Guwahati University and I'm going to discuss a very important topic in financial accounting branch accounting. Myself, Dr. Dupanjan Chakraborty, Associate Professor, Department of Commerce, Doral College. Introduction part. A branch may be defined as a section of an enterprise geographically separated from the rest of the business, controlled by a head office and generally carrying on the same activities as of the enterprise. Branches section of the enterprise. And if we consider the branch, we have to think from the geographical location because branch is segregated all over the parts of the world within India, outside India. And branch always have a head of fish. And the activities of the branch is controlled by the head of fish. And the branch is depend on the head of fish and head of fish allows the branch to carry the same functions as done by the head of fish. When the business grows, it may open up branches in different towns and cities in order to market its products or services over a large territory and thus increase its profits. If we want to increase our sales, if you want to market our products over a large territory, you have to open small units at different places. And these small units, ultimately, we can convert it into a branch. So in the sales, we want to increase the sales. That means ultimately to increase the profits. We have to open different small units at different places. And these small units are called branches. There are lots of examples of branches in India and outside India. State Bank of India is one of the very important <clears throat> bank of India, which has the largest network of branches spread across within the country and outside the country also. State Bank of India has a branch within, the, within India and State Bank of India has a branch outside India. Same is the case with Life Insurance Corporation of India. Life Insurance Corporation of India, with its head office at Mumbai, has been operating various branches in different parts of the country. Even LIC has also branches outside the country also. Same is the case with the Bata Shoe Company. This Bata Shoe Company, with its head office at Calcutta, has several branches all over the country. So, whether it's a bank, whether it's an insurance company, whether it's any company, so it has several branches all over the countries. And these branches are controlled mainly by the head of fish. It should be mentioned that branch is not a separate legal entity. Branch is not a separate legal entity. It is simply a segment of the business. That means it's a part of the business. From accounting standpoint, a branch is clearly an identifiable profit center. That means branch has to generate profits. That means head of fish will ultimately calculate the profits. And the, when the branch calculated profits, the profit belongs to the head of fish. That's why this branch is known as a profit center or a quality cost center also. In order to exercise greater control over the branches, it is necessary to assert and profit and loss made by such branches separately. Suppose a head of fish is situated at Mumbai. Suppose it has branches all over the country, like it has a branches as Guwahati, Dibrugarh, Tinshukia, Kolkata, Delhi, etc. That means we have to prepare branch account in the books of head of fish and to know the ultimate profit or loss made by each branches separately. Apart from this, specialized accounting techniques have to be adopted for controlling various branch activities and for their smooth running, both at the branch level at the head of each levels. There are several specialized accounting techniques that has to be adopted 
by the head office for its branches so the branch can operate very smoothly and both activities can be performed at the branch level and the head office level also the systems of accounting vary different vary between different enterprises in accordance with their type of activities methods of operations and the preference of their managements what type of accounts what type of accounting system a branch will undergo that depends on the type of activities what are the type of activities a branch do what are the methods of operations a branch will undergo and the different preferences of their managements so different types of accounting systems have to be adopted by the head office and ultimately the by the branches it depends on their type of activities it depends on the method of operations and the preference of their management why we need a branch accounting separately every branch under the strict control of head office has to find out the profit and loss to find out the profit or loss each branch for the accounting period to ascertain the financial position of each branch at the end of the accounting year to incorporate the net effect of branch transactions and their assets and liabilities in a firm's final accounts what is the position of assets what is the position of liabilities to estimate the requirements of cash and stock for each branch how much cash will be required by the branch how much stocks will be maintained at the branch to evaluate the progress and performance of each branch how the branch is going how the branch is performing how the branch is progressing that is also to be evaluated to calculate the commission for payment to the manager is based on the profit of the branch if a manager is appointed at the branch how much commission the manager will be given if it is based on profit of the branch because commission is always based on the profits so manager commission also very important part to assess the prospects for expansion of business in each branch whether the branch will be expanded or not that also depends it depends on the head office whether the branch will be expanded or not and to meet the audit requirements that is very very important because every branch has to be audited suppose the state bank of india or lic every branch has to meet the audit requirements and these audit has to be done by the chartered accountants there may be internal audit there may be external audits so audit requirement is a must for every branch so these are the needs for branch accounting now we are going to uh, <clears throat> find out the types of branches generally there are two types of branches one is home branches and there is foreign branches In home branch there is called also inland branches home branches there are two types of branches one is dependent branches another is independent branches dependent branches where the head office maintains all the accounts independent branches where the branch keeps its own accounts home branches where the head office and the branch is located at the same place that is called home branches that is called inland branches also and then the home branches under home branches dependent branches and independent branches are there dependent branches are where the head office maintain all the accounts and regarding independent branches where the branch keeps its own accounts and there is another branch called foreign branches and regarding foreign branches they almost invariably trade independently and record their transactions in foreign currencies Though the name are called foreign branches, they have some sort of independence. They, they almost invariably trade independently and record their transactions in foreign currencies. Suppose the State Bank of India is also a branch at the foreign country. Suppose if in the foreign country there is a branch in India also, so there same is the case with the foreign country also. If US, USA had a in USA there is a head office and the USA has branches in India, there is also foreign branches. so indian head office may have a foreign branches and us head office also may have branches in india also so these are the types of branches home branches and the foreign branches so these home branches and foreign branches these home branches are divided into two parts one is called dependent branches and another is called independent branches now what is dependent branches dependent branches also known as selling branches these branches this type of branches or such type of branches are mere agencies are mere agencies and are completely controlled by the head office in respect of their operations and accounts these dependent branches are totally controlled by the head office in respect of their operation and accounts that means head office will operates and the head office will prepare their accounts they have no sort of independence they are totally dependent on the head office regarding their operations and accounts they simply operate as a distributive depot selling goods supplied by the head office invariably at prices fixed up by the head office 
these dependent branches strictly depend on the head office because the head office will send the goods to these branches and the branch authorized to sell goods on the information supplied by the head office branch cannot do anything so without the permission of head office branch has to depend on the head office on the goods supplied from the head office and the at what price the branch will sell the goods to the customer that also the prices will be fixed by the head office and these branches do not maintain bookkeeping records and thus do not perform accounting functions for themselves they cannot or they do not perform accounting function for themselves because they belong to head office in every aspects they have to depend on head office head office have to fix the price on what what price the branch will sell goods to the customers they supply the necessary information or send returns and their bookkeeping is done at head office the branch will supply the information and send returns and their book bookkeeping is done at the head office that means their accounts are done at the head office they are only authorized to sell goods as instructed by the head office that means when the policies and administration of a branch are totally controlled by the head office who also maintains its accounts the branch is called a dependent branch that means administrations and policies of a branch are totally controlled by the head office who also maintains its accounts the branch is called a dependent branch types of dependent branches service branches and retail selling branches dependent branches are divided into two parts one is called service branches and another is called retail selling branches service branches may be in the form of booking orders on behalf of the head office and executing orders from head office that means this type of service branches are generally of small size they depend on the head office from every aspects they depend on head office for selling goods by the customers because branch has to depend on the head office branch cannot do anything on their parts so when the branch the service branches the service branches are booking or executing orders on behalf of head office that means the accounts relating to these type of branches constantly consist mainly of expenditure accounts for salaries wages traveling and miscellaneous expenses generally the branch manager is provided with a small fund regarding service branches the branch manager is provided with a small fund particularly a petty cash fund which is replenished periodically to pay small items of expenses the branch manager is required to submit periodical expenditure statements to head office upon receipt of which the head office forwards a replacement check for the total amount of expenditures so for proper control of branch expenditure the expenditure returns are analyzed and total each type of expenditures are debited to appropriate branch expenditure account and credited to branch cash accounts at the time of preparation of final accounts of the head office different branch expenditure accounts are transferred to profit and loss account of the head office that means these branches these service branches do they are a part of the dependent branches they are booking or executing orders on behalf of head office the accounts relating to these types of branches mainly consist of expenditure accounts of salaries wages traveling etc then small types of branches these service branches are there and regarding retail selling branches they are for retail selling branches the head office not only maintain all accounting records but also manufactures or purchases all or most of the required stock in bulk quantity that means head office has a great role under this retail selling branches head office not only maintains all accounting records but also manufactures or purchases all or most of the required stock in bulk quantity it is often found the most practical and economical way for the head office particularly with the increasing widespread use of sophisticated computers which can communicate with one another using telephone services to undertake all the bookkeeping and accounting work required as it simply involves asking for regular returns from various branches this practice is very useful for those organizations which operates on a large scale numerous branches with each branch practically being no more than a sales depot or selling outlet so retail selling branches are generally uh, for the large size of branches and service branches are generally of the small size branches and regarding retail selling branches sometimes head office goods transfer head office transfer goods to the branch at cost price sometimes head office transfer goods to the branch at invoice price there is selling price and sometimes head office send goods to the branch at wholesale price so these are the types of dependent branches now we are going to discuss the important part the accounting arrangement of retail dependent branches the accounting arrangement of a branch depend upon its size type of activities the method of operation and the degree of control to be exercised by the head office 
there are three main methods of accounting for branch transactions debtor system or synthetic system stock and debtor system that is also known as analytical system and final account system we are going to discuss today that is the debtor system or synthetic system that means when the accounting arrangement of retail dependent branches how the dependent branches maintain their accounts which accounting method has to be followed for the dependent branches that is very very important and the accounting arrangement of a branch depends upon its size how much the size of the branch whether it is small size or the larger size of branch what type of activities the branch is performing what type of method the branch is doing and the degree of control to be exercised by the head office how much control has a head office on the branch so the first method of maintaining accounts of dependent branches is a debtor system or synthetic system now what is debtor system or synthetic system now this debtor system is applicable for those branches which are very small size small size branches for small size branches this debtor system is applicable because the first accounting method for the dependent branches is called debtor system because dependent branches has to maintain their accounts on debtor system or synthetic system and those branches those dependent branches which are operating their accounts under debtor system or synthetic system these type of branches generally of the small size and they will they will follow the debtor system or synthetic system and under this system when the dependent branches will follow the debtor system for preparation of their accounts head office opens a separate account for each branch called branch account for finding out the profit and loss suppose head office has separate branches as calcutta delhi guwahati tinsukia dibrugor suppose it is operating from mumbai so the head office mumbai has to prepare a calcutta branch account uh, guwahati branch account tinsukia branch account separate separate branch for separate branch under the books of head office and branch account prepared in the head office books only under this system head office considered branch as a debtor and accounting entries are made treating branch as personal account why the name is called debtor system because here the each branch is treated as a debtor and the head office deals the branch as a debtor so that's why the name is called debtor system each branch is considered as a debtor and on the basis of the debtor head office send goods to the branch under this debtor system and since we are recording the transactions with the debtor that is the branch every branch is debtor any transactions involving branch and any third party does not find its place in the branch account only the transactions between the head office and the branch will come under the debtor system no third party transactions will come under the branch account under this system third party transactions may be in case of cash sales maybe even credit sales where the third party is involved cash sales or credit sales made by the branch are not recorded in the branch account under the debtor system because as the parties involved are the branch and their customers because customers are the third party head office if head office is the first part branch is the second party the third party is the customers so regarding that type of cash sales or credit sales are not recorded in the branch accounts only the transactions between the head office and the branch head office and another in relation to branch and the branch and head office only these three things are have to be remembered only the transaction between the head office will come under the debtor system no third party transactions will come the profit earned or loss incurred by each branch is transferred to general profit and loss account every branch has to prepare its accounts and head office will prepare its account because it is a retail dependent branch we are discussing the accounting systems of dependent branches and dependent branches preparing their first accounting system on debtor system and any profit or loss earned by each branch is transferred to general profit and loss account if it is a profit that will be uh, profit that will be credited and if it is a loss that will be debited and head office may send goods to branch either at cost price or selling price because since the head office has strict control over the branch under the debtor system these are dependent branches accounting system of dependent branches we are discussing debtor system so head office may send goods to the branch at cost price and sometimes head office is selling goods to the branch at selling price because the price will be fixed up by the head office branch cannot fix its own price branch is authorized to sell goods on the instructions from the head office so these are the features of the debtor systems now if we want to prepare the branch account in the books of head office under debtor system so there is a format of branch account under the books of head office so in the examination also students have to prepare the branch account in the books of head office so there are two sides debit side and credit side i have not written the debit and credits so in the debit side there may be opening stock there may be opening debtors opening prepaid expenses opening petty cash opening fixed assets like computer furniture etc opening cash 
So in the books of head office, we are preparing the branch account. So when you prepare the branch account in the books of head office, these are the opening assets you write in the debit sites. Opening asset. These are the last year's closing assets. So these are the opening assets of the branch. Next is when the head office will send goods to the branch. Suppose you are passing journal entries. When the head office will send goods to the branch, goods goes out. Goods goes out from the head office. So the journal entry will be in the books of head office. Branch account debit to goods account. Goods sent to branch accounts. The head office from the head office goods are goes out. So journal entry will be branch account debit to goods account. Goods sent to branch account. So it will appear in the debit sides. So in the books of head office, branch account debit to goods sent to branch account. Suppose there is a cash sent by the head office to the branch. When the head office send cash to the branch, cash will be goes out from the head office. So it will be two cash branch account debit to cash or two bank. If the head office sends checks, so it will be two bank. If the head office send cash, it will be two cash. I am discussing the journal also here. So you go to ledger also. So regarding if any expenses is paid by the head office for for any expenses, if head office send money to the branch, suppose there is an expenses for wages to the branch people's wages wages paid by the head for regarding wages regarding salaries regarding petty cash regarding different types of expenses head office has to send cash because these are the dependent branches these are the dependent branches debtor system so head office has to send cash so in the head office has to send cash and the head office has to send check for the expenses paid by the um, uh, branches like wages paid salaries paid petty cash paid so in the books of head office branch account debit to cash or to bank regarding closing liabilities to balance it of outstanding expenses outstanding salary outstanding wages and creditors so these are the debit sides and in the credit side if there is opening liabilities you have to write by balance with the outstanding expenses like outstanding salary outstanding wages and creditors now in the debit side head of each and goods to the branch we have credited it branch account debit to goods and to branch suppose if some goods are rejected by the branch then branch has to return the goods to the head office when the head office will receive the goods again then the goods will be debited in the books of head office the journal entry will be goods sent to branch account debit to branch account in the books of head we don't need to write by goods return now it is you have to write by goods sent to branch for goods returned by the branch or its customers to the head office suppose my customer some customers may send directly goods to head office or branch may send goods to the head office if the goods are rejected by somehow so that's will be head office again receive the goods so by goods it will be debited sometimes cash is sent by the customer or branch to the head office if the customer send cash or uh, check to the head office then the head office will again receive the cash so cash will be debited or bank debit journal entry will be cash or bank account debit to branch account regarding opening assets in the debit side there will be closing assets in the credit side like balance sheet stock debtors prepared expenses petty cash fixed assets and cash so these are the opening assets then there is a goods sent to branch then there is a cash then there is a cash sent to the branch for expenses then there is a closing liability in the debit side then there is opening liability in the credit side there may be goods return by the branch there may be a cash return by the cash emitted by the branch there may be a cash emitted by the customers and there is a closing liabilities also in the credit side then you have to calculate the branch profit or loss if the credit credit side is more than the debit side then there is a profit and that profit will be transferred to two general profit and loss account profit if the credit side is more than the debit side so generally it will be branch account debit to general profit and loss account and if there is a loss loss will be there when the debit side is more than the credit side it will be by general profit and loss account because under debtor system if there is a profit earned by the branch if there is a loss incurred by the branch this profit or loss should be transferred to general profit and loss account so if there is a profit general profit and loss will be credited if there is a loss general profit and loss account will be so Uh, debit so regarding these opening assets and the goods sent to branch these opening assets are known as opening capital and these goods sent to branch branches are known as the capital at the middle of the periods so this is the branch account in the books of head office under the debtor system now when the uh, head office follow the debtor system and the branch follow the debtor system sometimes debtor head office send the goods to the branch at the cost price and sometimes is a uh, selling price Now we are discussing the when the where the goods are sent by the head office to the branch at cost price and the branch is authorized to goods for cash sale only, cash only. Then what are the records are to be maintained at the branch? The branch will maintain when the head office will send goods to the branch at cost price. That means at suppose it is hundred, head office is sending the goods to the branch at hundred only to the branch and the branch is authorized to sell the goods to the customers at uh, cash only, not in the credit. We are discussing the 
branch is authorized to sell goods to the customers at cash only, not at the uh, selling price. So debtor system where the goods are sent by the head office to the branch at cost price and the branch is authorized to sell goods for cash only. So what are the what are the records at the branch? So in the head office send goods to the branch and the cost price and the branch is authorized to goods for cash only. So head office in the books of branch, branch will maintain the following account. Stock register, one stock register will be maintained in the branch. The stock register is used to record all goods received from the head office, all goods returned to the head office, sale of goods and the balance of stock. That means stock register will be maintained by the branch for knowing the exact stock at the end of the uh, year. Then branch will maintain another cash book. The cash book is used to record cash transactions relating to cash sales received from customers and the remittance to head office. Then there is another book to be maintained by the branch, that is petty cash book. The petty cash book is used to record the receipt of cash from the head office and the petty expense of the branch itself. The amount of periodical expense is remitted by the head office to the branch. So these are the records at the branch. And regarding records at head office, the head office will maintain the following four accounts when the head office send to the branch at the cost price only. Head office has to prepare the branch account. That I've already discussed because every head office has to prepare a branch account. So the under branch account, uh, profit and loss will be ascertained for a separate each type of branch. Then head office will operate, uh, maintain another account that is goods sent to branch account. How much goods will be sent by the head office to the branch and how much goods will be done by the branch to the head office. So for sending the goods to the branch and returning the goods by the branch, that there should be a uh, balance. So if there is a uh, difference between the goods sent to branch and the goods returned by the branch, the balance will be transferred to trading account or purchase account. Then head office will uh, maintain another account that is called branch stock account. Suppose at the balancing time, if there is any stock of goods lying with the branch, the same is brought into record by debiting branch stock account and crediting branch accounts. At the beginning of the next year, in order to transfer the balance of stock account, branch account is debited and branch stock account is credited. Then another account is maintained at the head of it, that is called branch petty cash account. At the balancing time, if there is any balance of petty cash lying with the branch, suppose if there is any petty cash lying with the branch, the same is brought into record by debiting branch petty cash account and crediting branch account. At the beginning of next year, in order to transfer the balance of branch petty cash account, branch account is debited and petty cash account is credited. These uh, presentations are discussing only the theoretical part of branch accountings. This is my part one. The next one, when I will prepare the next slides, I will just go with the sums, practical sums only. So these are the theoretical parts. If we clear the theoretical part, then sums will be very clear. So these are the debtor systems or synthetic systems where the head office are goods are sent by the head office to the branch at cost price. Now, what are the uh, transactions that will not appear under the debtor systems when the branch maintained their account on the debtor systems? Cash sales at branch, credit sales at branch, normal loss at branch, bill fare at abnormal loss at branch, expenses paid by the branch, bad debts discount left to the debtors. These are the third party transactions. While we are discussing the debtor system, the debtor system is related to those branches where the size of the branch is very small. And under debtor system, only this, those transactions will appear under the books of head office. Only those transactions that will have a head office and branch. No third party transactions will come. These cash sales are related to third party. Credit sales are related to third party. There is no treatment of normal loss at the branch. There is no treatment of abnormal loss at the branch. When the loss, abnormal loss related to goods by fire, loss by fire, goods stolen. These are no, no, they have no these have no entry in the branch account under debtor system. Normal loss. Normal loss at any time there may be a loss. Well, goods are coming from the uh, head office to the branch, there may be a you know, leakage or um, uh, like, like this. So there is no treatment of normal loss at the branch because normal loss is adjusted when the goods are sent by the head office to the branch. Abnormal loss, there is no treatment of abnormal loss in the branch account. But if there is an insurance in the uh, goods loss or if there is an insurance claim, then that will appear. That will be discussed in the latter slides. If the if, if the branch paid any if the branch paid any expenses, suppose petty expense paid by the branch. Suppose if there is a petty expense paid by the branch, that will not appear in the branch account under the debtor system. There is no treatment of petty expense paid by the branch under the debtor system. Only those things which are the head office send goods to the branch, head office will send cash to the branch for meeting expenses, head office will send goods to the branch, that will appear only under the debtor system. Because these are the account, branch will maintain their account strictly under the books of head office. And these bad debts, discount alert, etc., related to debtors only. Only debtor. And debtor is a third party. Bad debts related to third party. Debtors. Discount alert related to third party. So these third party transactions will never appear under the branch account under debtor system. So these are the discussions 
of the branch, the theoretical part only is the part one, is all about the branch account, only data system. In the next uh, class or next presentations, I will discuss the uh, practical part, how you prepare the branch account under the data system by following the cost price methods and invoice price methods. Thank you.